Hallelujah. Welcome again to this um, channel this afternoon. See, there is something I would just want to say briefly before you, you watch the movie. And um, I'm sorry, we, 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 like, you, you people don't subscribe to this channel. We discover that we have quite a lot of views on this channel, but less subscribers. You just watch those subscribers and we have begged, we have done all we could do. See, we are at your mercy. No matter how tongue speaking and, and spiritual we are, God will not come down to subscribe to us. You are the one that can do it. It's in your hand. You are, it is in your power to do. You can, God will not come down to do it. It's in your hand. It's in your power to do. And it doesn't cost. Just, just subscribe to the channel. We are at your mercy. God's work is at your mercy. This channel is at your mercy. Please, will you help us subscribe? Let us hear this word. We are begging humbly. It's like... No, I'm not crying. I'm like, I'm not crying. Like, I said I will not shed a single tear upon the sister. So, I won't shed a single tear upon the subscription button. I won't shed a single tear. But please, just... Bro, Femi, bro, John, Fajus Baba, is, is he crying? No, but it's like, please, just go subscribe. Please, subscribe. Please, press the button. I have subscribed. 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 I am subscribing now. Oh, wow. so good. Thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. I should subscribe. You have subscribed to victory testimony in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Enjoy your viewing. sent to you again a very good job you are doing you're really communicating the mind of god the wisdom of god glory to god in the highest hosanna to the king who will remain forever aside from trusting god hoping on god waiting on god returning from the university back gate and answering the call of the cave of Babylon, there is yet another great key that can insist that a season of affliction be over immediately. What key could that be? The supernatural, the prophetic, the power that can call things that are not as though they were. I know about the prophetic. I know about the supernatural. All men see in part and prophesy in part. Indeed, I know that you know about the prophetic. But there is a wisdom of engagement that can help the parts that you know. I'm, I'm hoping to receive this with understanding. Then, the entrance of his word bringeth light. Receive the illumination. For there is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Yes, Elijah. Good morning, Uncle Williams. Good morning. Oh. Uncle Williams, I've been wondering, how long can affliction last? 
how long can one be trusting? I believe there should be an emergency rescue system that can change things overnight. You mean the rescue system of by this time tomorrow? Exactly. Because trusting is not easy. Even waiting is not also easy. Indeed. When the anointing is made available, when the revelation is made available, men begin to come to the source to receive solutions automatically. What do you mean? Because Bro Godwin and I discussed this yesterday when he was faced with so many questions from people that he could not answer. And he even promised to be here this morning being the weekend. I learned something just now. You see, when there is a fresh anointing or revelation in the life of a man, men begin to come to the source. So this anointing begins to draw men. And what about the situation when men don't come? It is because there is nothing. The anointing is a spirit. The spirit of men has the capacity to draw men Man. As long as you carry the solution to the problem of men to answer their questions and to clear their doubts. Oh God, put something in my life that will cause men to make a demand on my grace. You get it. And that's the truth. But you know what? You get these kind of things in Adulam. Mm. And one thing about this thing is that if it is there, it's there. If it is not there, it's not there. That must be Brother Godwin. Hmm. That brother just know how to jump at one very early in the morning. If brother you go and meet him, I will join you guys. I have to freshen up. Okay. All right. Don't be too late. The vessels of men be open, Natibu Satana Labashata, E Fata, E Fata, E Fata. That the vessels of men be open, that their eyes be open, Nakida Basata Dabash. That men will see, that men will see, that men will see another revelation of you, Lord, Nabasata. That the ears shall be open, that the mind shall be open, Nakida Basata, Nedibu Nanabasha. That the mind of men is open to receive the word of truth. That power, the power shall emit, Lord, the power shall emit from this movie now. Nabida Buladabasha. That men will see your outstretched harm, that they shall see your promise again, that they shall see you again. That men will see you from the beginning to the end. You are not just the Alpha and the Omega, but at the same time, you are the beginning, you are the ending too. That throughout this prophetic moment, let the prophet speak that the that made the that the climatic environment and atmosphere of your people obeys you, Lord. Until men shall see and are committed to hear what you have to say. Nani kiribu satana nana balabash. That men are doing everything in obedience to the Christ. That men shall see that the eyes of men are open. You see, light is very important. Hmm? Illumination is very important as far as the matter of this kingdom is concerned. Because the Bible says uh, the light shining in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. That is in John chapter 1 verse 5. Exactly. Many people claim to have light and it's fine. Question, is the light large enough you know, to illuminate the magnitude of darkness that is surrounding them? For instance, a small candle light is also called light. But if you have a small candle light, the question is, is it uh, light enough? Is it big enough to illuminate a very big hall filled with darkness? Of course not. So you need a larger amount of light for you to be able to illuminate the darkness that you find in a very big hall. Hmm. Now I get it. Um, Uncle Williams, 
what level of light do you have? Well, um, by reason of God's grace and revelation, I will be exposing some mysteries. And these uh, mysteries are both revelatory in nature, also prayerful in nature. We'll be able to silence or to remove any affliction that anyone might be facing. Exactly, Uncle Williams. Some people's situation is so serious and pathetic that they actually need intervention. That's very true, sir. Uncle Williams, yeah. let's, let's bring it on. Let us unveil these three mysteries already. These mysteries are like prayers, and you see, they are prayers also mixed up with mysteries. And if one can engage with understanding, it can bring result here and now. And you see, the first mystery is called the mystery of remembrance. Mm -hmm. Mystery of remembrance. Exactly. Oh, yeah. this is profound. Surely, the Lord sent a message through prophet Isaiah to Ezekiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ezekiah was also in the University of Tears at that time. You know, he was battling a serious ailment. And so God sent Isaiah to him to tell him that that sickness will kill him and that he will not recover, that the sickness is unto death. Um, Uncle Williams, I think I am very familiar with that story. You think the Bible says that all these words must come to pass? <laughs> the Bible says that anything the Lord said must happen. And you remember, this is not a mere man speaking. This is God sending an, a, a prophet like a prophet Isaiah to go and speak to this man. You see, when Isaiah went to Ezekiah and told him, this sickness will kill you, so said the Lord. Ezekiah was not running from pillar to post. Because if I didn't even ask Isaiah, Isaiah, come, what are you saying? Immediately Isaiah delivered the message Isaiah left. Ezekiah did not go from pillar to post. He didn't shout, he didn't cry. He knew what to do. And so he turned his back against the world and said, God, have you forgotten the way I served you in truth? He said, have you forgotten all I did in your sight? I was faithful, I was this, I was that. Immediately, if Isaiah left the church building, God sent him back and said, Isaiah, go back. Go back and meet Ezekiah. He said, because Ezekiah knew something that we cannot change. He has engaged in mystery of remembrance. So go back to him and tell him, that since he decided not to die, he will not die. And I'm adding to his years, 15 years. God give us understanding of his words. Uncle Williams, I have never read the Bible in that light before. And that is the meaning Uncle Williams was talking about before. Mm. Oh, Uncle, what happened to someone who has no track record for God? Then this mystery cannot work for that person. Mm. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, when the evil days has not come. It means that while you are your youthful age, begin to remember your creator, so into his presence, work for him faithfully, and serve him. Because when the evil days come, there will be a track record that you can use to engage the mystery of remembrance. Remembrance. And immediately God changed his mind. Because someone had track record before him. Lord, help me to serve you faithfully and genuinely than I have ever been before. So if God could change his mind because someone engaged the mystery of remembrance, the God of the Bible, who must speak and it must come to pass, the God who say, I am that I am, the beginning and the end. The God whose Bible says one jot or one tittle will no longer pass or be fulfilled. But this time around, he changed his mind. He changed his tongue because somebody engaged that mystery with understanding. Now tell me, who is that man? What is that affliction? What is that problem that will hang on the neck of anybody who have engaged that mystery of remembrance? Remember, that was the same mystery that uh, Mordecai engaged. Mordecai had track record before the king, and when mm. Amma was after his life, a book of remembrance was opened. There is something about remembrance, brethren. There is something about how you have lived your life before God that you can engage in the days of affliction. That's very true, sir. And in the case of Mordecai and Haman, the same pit that Haman dug for Mordecai, he was buried in it. 
all these things are placed in the Bible, not carelessly. They are placed there so that the right people, those who have revelation and illumination, can dig it out for people to see. So it takes an investment in the spirit to go into the Bible with revelation, open the schools and dig it out for the people out there to get blessed and understand the solutions to their problems. Now you know what? Don't let us waste our time in this mystery. Because we should be the first and spectators that should benefit from this mystery. And so we are going to engage that mystery now with understanding. As you are sitting there, a child mm. of God in affliction, mm. begin to think back. Mm. Look at the days you served him faithfully. The time you were supposed to cheat in church, you didn't cheat. The time you had the privilege to cheat in exam, you didn't cheat. The time many things came from Babylon, but you said, no, I will rise for you. You will now begin to remember and remember those things now. With understanding, you now engage those mysteries and bring it to God. What is that affliction you are passing through? What is that problem you are passing through? What is that challenge you have been passing through for years? Let's begin to engage the mystery of remembrance. Let's begin to pray. Begin to remind God of everything you have done. The day you were faithful. The day you sacrificed yourself on this vineyard. And just like Ezekiah, you say, God, remember. Remember I was faithful. Remember I served you. Remember I have spent all my youthful years to serve you. Lord, check my age now. If you look at my age now, remove the number of years I've used to serve you. It's more than half my age. I have invested everything men has given to me. Everything they have used to bless me, I've sent back to you. I've sown seed. I've done sacrifices. I have lingered in your presence. I've been a blessing to people. I've wasted my years and everything on the altar of sacrifice. So therefore, I decree and declare, whatever affliction that is struggling my life in this minute, I bury you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever men have spoken, whatever they have done in the spiritual realm, to bring anything to happen in the physical, I invoke the midst of remembrance and I take it back. I restore, I get my miracle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. These are protocols that can be engaged when you are facing affliction. Mm. It is erroneous to just read the Bible like Ralea and Sunday, mm. and you just read it like that today in church. This is Bible study. And when you study the Bible, you must invoke spirit because it is spirit that is going to bring understanding of what you are reading. If spirit does not read with you, you are just reading a comprehension passage. You won't get anything from it. So this is how we invoke the mystery of remembrance to get miracles and all the afflictions are rolled away. End of class for the first mystery. And this is a very powerful tool to engage in days of affliction, the mystery of remembrance. Yes, thank, you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank God. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy upon me, oh Lord. Not much. Lord, not so much to remind you of, oh Lord. Ah, Lord, am I really serving you faithfully? Am I faithful enough? Lord, am I sure I will not be reminding you of the activities? Lord, without you in these activities, <laughs> ah, everyone knows me as an energetic one on campus. Doing everything, running up and down. But I know, I know that I am not faithful enough in my service to you, oh Lord. I know, I know that I am just working for you, Lord. But not working with you. God, please help me. Not too much to remind me of. Lord, please help me. Help me, oh Lord. I want to have a track record for you, oh Lord. I want to have a track record, oh Lord. Please, I cannot do it by myself. Unless you take over and you help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus, help me.
Elijah. Yeah. I have never felt the same since I left your house yesterday. Uh -uh. Hmm. What is the problem? You know, after all the teachings Uncle Williams did yes, um, last time, I felt I feel the need, you know, I feel the need to begin to serve God faithfully and intentionally. Hmm. Because I also want to have a track record before my God. You see, that challenged me too. Mm. But then, that is what is expected mm. when we truly encounter the word. Mm. I mean, God's word, it mm. must tear something on our inside. You are, you are right. Are we going to see him this evening after lectures? Uh, yes, yes, we should. We should okay. back from office like oh, wow, that. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. That, that's great, Ben. Because I cannot imagine what the second mystery will be. Uh, likewise, likewise. I, know, yeah, like, I cannot really wait to have I, it. I can't wait to be like seriously. Let's let's let's, let's set out already. Uh. The second mystery is the mystery of the stormy seas. Because um, storms can also be likened to affliction. But before I dive into it, I want to give you four proofs that you can use to detect that you are in the storms of life. Thank you, Uncle Williams. But sir, can we relate this mystery to the story of the stormy seas in the Bible, according to the book of Matthew chapter 8? Exactly. <laughs> There's a great mystery in that story of the stormy seas that many people don't know about. But before then, let me talk about the four points, the four keys, the four proofs that you will see in your life that you'll be able to know that indeed it's like I'm in a storm, I'm in a storm. You see, one of the things you're going to observe when you're in a storm of life is that it affects your visibility you cannot see and people also cannot see you if you look at a storm you know when the sea is raging you see water uproar wind everywhere nobody is able to see you it affects the visibility do you know in that same story the bible said there are other small ships also that also in that same sea at the same time but the storm was too much they cannot see so when you are in a storm of life when you find yourself in a position that people are around you, but yet they cannot help you. People can help you around you, but they didn't help you. People can favor you around, they didn't favor you. You observe that it's like nobody is seeing me. Where am I? Is he not seeing me? Are they not seeing me? It's not their fault. The visibility is affected. And that's the first proof you know that you're in a storm. Your visibility is affected. People cannot see you. They cannot help you. They cannot favor you. Mm -hmm. So, storm affects visibility. Hmm. Number two is that storms affect your voice. When you are in a storm, no matter how much you shout, your voice will not be heard. Look at the story in that Matthew. As the storm was raging, those disciples would have shouted, Help! We are drowning! Help! You will think those people who are around are wicked. They are not wicked, but unfortunately, your voice cannot be heard. Anytime God's children are in a storm, their voice cannot be heard. So it is vain shouting when you are in the storm and waving your hands. Nobody will see you. So when you see that you have tried your best to communicate this person, to communicate that person, nobody is hearing you. You shout and cry. Nobody is hearing you. Don't say they are wicked. You are in a storm of life. The storm is raging. They can't hear your voice. So the second proof to know you are in a storm of life is that your voice is affected. Your impact cannot be heard. Your voice cannot be heard. Even if you have a car, you carry a fiatic ministry. You preach, you preach, you preach. You can pray well, you can preach well. Men will not make a demand on your grace because your voice is silenced. You are in a storm. Your voice cannot be heard. Your impact cannot be heard. Your gifts cannot be heard. Your skills cannot be seen because you are in a storm. These things are really deep because you can hardly hear anyone shouting during a serious rainfall. Number three is that storms affect speed and movement. No matter how professional you are as a sailor, once there's a storm, you have to slow down. 
Storm programs delay. It reduces your speed because you have no reason to walk with speed or movement when there's a storm in your life. Some people now, their lives have been set at one point or the other. They have been running with speed, but at a point things happen to them, they can't run with speed anymore, my brother. That is a storm. Take for instance, you are traveling, you know, under a very heavy rain and the rain is falling, no matter how <laughs> you can drive. The question is, you are not a bad driver, you are, you are a very good driver, you know how to drive, but because of the heavy rain, you have to park your car and wait until the storm is over. So storms impede your movement, it impedes your speed, it programs delay, and it makes sure that what you're supposed to achieve in one year, you achieve in 10 years. Mm. That is what storm does. It reduces your movement, it reduces your speed. When the devil hears about what God has said about your life and says, maybe in the next five months, I'm going to be lifting this person, all the devil does is to program storm. Once it's programmed storm, it makes it difficult for you to reach that goal in five months. And you'll be praying, and God will keep telling you, my son, I've spoken. Five months is five months. But God, you see the storm now, you say five months, but who to help me in the storm? He was sleeping in the boat. Once he speaks, I've spoken. He said, twice have I spoken, once have I had all power belong yet unto God. But when the devil hears that, that God has said about a man, he programs storms in your life. So that that will put you on the old, that will put you on the spot for a long time and will not allow you to walk in that which the Lord has said about your life. Holy Spirit, help my life. Give me a deep understanding of your word. Amen. Number four, storms affect your vision. It incapacitates your sight. You cannot see far. Haven't you been? In a, you know, in a vehicle before and the rain was heavy, after using your wiper to wipe the screen, you will still see that it's like there is a cloudy you know, mm. picture you can't see until you have to park. That's what storm does. Mm. Once storms is in your life, you cannot see far. You won't see your vision. You won't be able to see, you won't be able to see far and deep into your future. So storms affect your vision and anything that affects your vision and your sight has affected you. Because you will only grow to the end of what God has said about you. But if what he has said is in front and you have not seen it, how are you going to be it? So storms, the fourth reason and the fourth things that storm affects is your vision, your sight. These ones are deep. I mean, they are mysteries. But Uncle Williams, what? then what mysteries can we engage in the stormy seas of yeah. life? Yeah. Do, you, do you hear that? No. Is that, is that not mommy's junior flower? No. Let's go and flower. Maybe there's no. an issue. What have I done? Let's, let's go and check them. What have I done? What is my offense? What have I done? Ah, Jesus! What have I done? My husband and I served you. We served you all our days. Ah, Jesus! Ah, why are you sleeping? <laughs> Please take it easy. God is on the truth. Do what? All this is not doing what? Tell me, doing what? Doing what on the truth? What is the prayer on the throne? Ah! This morning's devotion was God our protector. My husband taught us. My husband taught us. Ah! So tell me, why is it that that God could not save him? He could not keep him. Ah! He is not on the throne. He is not. He is not on the throne. Oh. Madam, please take it easy. Eh? Be careful of what you'll be saying to God. Hey, take it easy now. Oh, no, ah, please, ah, don't ah, shut her up. Ah, leave her. She's not a bloody man. <laughs> there are things, pains, and storm can do to a man. Junior, come. Ah! Hey, sit down. Sit down. Ah, my God. It is real. It is real. I really pity the family. The man they saw in the morning is no more. 
my brother. <laughs> it is a serious scenario. You see, only God can speak to them in his own way. Ah. Even though he slay me, I will trust him. Even though he slays my family, I will still trust him. <laughs> hmm. Following Christ is not easy. Ah. Christianity is not a religion. No. Oh. People think Christianity is just a religion. You go to church, you worship. It is following Christ, holding tight to him in the face of comfort and calamity. And these are the things that build up our faith. Now to the mystery of the storm misses. Uh, I want you to read from the Bible in Mark chapter 4 verse 39. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. <laughs> Jesus Christ did not rebuke the water. The Bible said he rebuked the wind. And when he rebuked the wind, the water has to obey. The water is just a puppet to the wind. Although the water looks like the disturbance that we can actually see, but it's not the water, it's the wind. So when God wants to speak to water, when God wants to calm the water, when God wants to calm the stormy seas, he does not talk to water, he talks to wind. And once wind obey, water must obey. So as he rebuked the wind, the waters obeyed. This is something new. So the storm was made of water and the wind. But then the real cause of the storm was the wind. Mm -hmm. So the hatred that people have towards you in the office is just the water. Mm. The lack and the problem is just the water. The spirit of disfavor is just the water. The sickness is just the water. And that is all everybody are focused on. But that is not the real problem. There is something spiritual about those things that you have been rebuking. Once that spiritual dimension is rebuked, then this thing will stop. It means that the hatred in your office is just the water. There is a wind dimension of it you should rebuke for that hatred to go. It means that the lack and the sickness is just the water. There is a wind dimension of it that must be rebuked for those things to go. You have been rebuking the sickness and rebuking the lack and rebuking the enmity all the while. That's not the protocol. Mm. The prophetic protocol is to rebuke the wind and then the thing you call water will cease. Asha, Jesus rebuked the wind first. He didn't pay attention to the water. Mm. He knew what the problem was and he fought the right enemies. Good Elijah. So it means your spouse is not your enemy. No. That is it. Your parents are not your enemy. Men of God, your members are not your enemy. Businessman, your laborers and workers are not your enemy. They are not the one bringing rubbish to your business. They are not the one affecting the church of God. They are not the one affecting the home. You have been focusing on them as the enemy. They are not your enemy. Rebuild the wind and everything will settle. There is a spirit behind all these negative happenings that need to be rebuked. And that spirit dimension is called the wind. That's what you rebuke when you find yourself in the midst of storms. But why the storm at that particular time? It is. That's not the first time the disciples have been going you know, through the sea. But you see, storms come to your life any time you want to cross over. Any time you want to go to the other side. Anytime a new season wants to be opened unto you, anytime a new face wants to be opened unto you, anytime God wants to bring you from the valley of nothingness to the mountain of expectancy, what you see that comes in your life at that time is storms to hinder you from living where you are to where you ought to be. In Mark 4, 35, when the story started, if you check your Bible, Jesus told his disciples, he said, come, let us go to the other side. So because there's something about the other side, the devil does not want you to get to. That was why the storm comes to stop them. But Uncle Williams, Jesus was in that boat. 
Why did the water from the storm keep entering the boat? Was the presence of Jesus useless? Mm -hmm. The presence of Jesus in your boat does not automatically bring deliverance. Jesus in your boat is just a hope that you will not be lost. Mm -hmm. Water will still enter your boat until you know what you are supposed to do. That you are a child of God and Jesus is in your life. Jesus is in the boat of your life. Does not stop and scare battles away. So that you are a child of God and you have Jesus in your life. Jesus is in the boat of your life. Does not mean that storms will not come. The storms will rage. Problems will come. Except you know what to do with Jesus. Your humility must make you to call upon him. To be aware that his day is not enough. Mm -mm. You must call upon him. You wake him up and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's how you engage the water that keeps flowing, the storms that keeps coming into your life. Ah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now I see myself. Now I realize that I have not acknowledged you enough in the boat of my life. Lord, I am so sorry. Now I realized. Now I know that you are here with me, but I do not acknowledge you, Jesus. Please help me. Help me. Now we are going to pray one prayer. Sir. For some people who are Christians, they will say, Lord, I rebuke this wind that is coming, that is happening to my life in Jesus' name. You are too small to rebuke the wind. Mm. It is Jesus that rebuke wind. So anytime you are engaging the mystery of the stormy seas, you are not the one to rebuke the wind. You say the Lord rebuke you. Let's pray together. Every wind of affliction. Every wind of affliction. You guys, if, if you are in the real storm of life, you will not shout like this. Mm. If you are about to die and your boat is capsizing, you will not shout like this. There is something shouting does. Shouting explains frustration. Yes, shouting tells Jesus Christ that you are tired of the situation. So you shout it loud and clear. Every wind of affliction, every, every wind, wind of, of affliction, affliction has been sponsoring calamity in my life. That, that has been sponsoring calamities in my every life. Every wind of affliction, every wind of affliction has been sponsoring sickness in my life. That has been sponsoring sickness in my life. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord begin to pray. Father, the name of wind Jesus. of affliction. That has been sponsoring delay. That has been sponsoring sickness. That has been sponsoring affliction. That has been Now I understand. I am not rebuking the water. I am not rebuking the affliction. I am not rebuking the water. Jesus rebuke you. 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 Whatever is the spirit, whatever is the spirit, whatever is the spirit that is sponsoring delay, that is sponsoring delay in my father's house, in my father's house, the Lord rebuke you, the Lord rebuke you to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever is sponsoring delay in my father's house, the Lord rebuke you now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Amen. End of class for the second mystery, the mystery of the stormy seas. Rebuke the wind and the storm will stop. Rebuke the spiritual dimension of that calamity and the storm will stop. We will discuss the last mystery tomorrow. Yes, sir. Please subscribe. Brother Williams, I can't find my husband. <sighs> now, what do you have to tell me? <sighs> Jesus did not save my husband from the accident. But he saved other people. Ah! It's okay now. It's okay. Ah! Brother Williams, you are not saying anything. Are you not going to say anything? You are not saying anything. Mommy Junior. It's only the Holy Spirit that can speak to you in times like this, in the language that you will understand. There's absolutely nothing I can see that, that can really sort it out. The Holy Spirit will Holy speak Spirit. to you. Holy Spirit, please talk to me. Talk to me. At least tell me what to do. Tell me my offense. <sighs> Mommy Junior, I 
think the most important thing for you to do now is to keep quiet. Just don't say anything. <clears throat> when you keep quiet, then you will allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. <clears throat> Thank you. I will keep quiet. I will keep quiet. I will not say anything again. I will keep quiet. <sighs> and I think it's good that you rest early <clears throat> enough. Even if you find it difficult to get to sleep, which is an awkward thing, just lay on your bed. Find rest. Exactly what I've been trying to tell her. Eh? She says she can't sleep. Where is Junior? How is she doing now? Oh, she's getting better. She's getting better. She's coming around. Are people still there? People? <laughs> everybody will eventually go back to their houses. And that's why, you know, everybody must learn to depend on the Holy Spirit as the only partner in time of crisis. Mm. But the um, woman is still... The woman is still there with her. Oh, that, that, that is good. Oh, but I really pity Mommy Junior. I really pity her. Ah, ah. May God deliver us from evil. Ah. Exactly. And that prayer you just prayed is one of the most important elements. Eh? It's part of the, the mystery I'm going to be talking about next. Because <laughs> there are many arrows flying day and night, except that God delivers us. Ah. Eh? Cool, let's, let's get inside. It's cold out here. Did you get into my room? Fear not, for the promise is too good. Fear not? That looks like introductory lines of angels. Teresa, sorry about your loss. Oh, you know? <laughs> what is my offense? A man was born blind from birth, and the disciples asked Jesus, Who sinned? And Jesus said, None, but that the glory of God be revealed. <laughs> when I am bereaved, how does God get the glory? How does God get the glory when I cry? This same way he got glory, when his only son was crucified on the cross. Whatever that happens to his children, whether good or bad, is for his glory. So you must allow him. Ha. Huh. That's not easy. Giving him glory in the moments of my sadness and weeping. <sighs> it is normal to give glory when things are smooth. It is normal to be happy and give him glory when he has done beautiful things. But it is abnormal in this realm to give God glory in sad times. But I must let you know that it is the abnormal Christian that touches him most. Abnormal Christians? Just like Job, who lost all in one day. And he said in Job chapter 1 verse 21, that the Lord gave it and he had taken it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Teresa, you have not lost all. So why not allow the glory of God to show forth in your life and in your son that you may see that indeed he is faithful. <sighs> Jesus. Jesus, help me. 
help me. He has helped you. You have strength. Praise his holy name. Serve him like never before. And see what he does. What is your name? I am Gabriel. Gabriel? Gabriel. Oh, take the glory, Lord. Take all the glory. I submit to your will. Ah. Junior. How are you? Yes. Good morning. Sit down. Ah. Hey, Elijah, do you know he's here? What's everything? When my father and my mother are forsaken, the Lord will take care of me. Who's that? Where did you get that from? I met a new friend. His name is Gabriel. He told me in my dreams. Oh, that's a Psalm 27 verse 3. Hmm? I know God will take care of you. You know, God did not just take your father. Hmm? He himself has become your father now. God is himself is now your father. And anytime you need him, find a silent place and talk to him. He will hear you. Will you come to me when I call him? If you call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come and praise his name. All the saints of God. So don't worry, if you call him, he will answer. Have you told your mommy about your new friend yet? No, I haven't. Mm. He is too late. Oh, when she wakes up, hmm? tell her. I tell will. her about your new friend. Hmm? Yes, I will. All right. I want to finish it off. If you go and take her, sorry. Ah, I thought you guys were inside. No. Uh, I went to get something at the nine bar store. Oh, so yeah. I meant Bogodwin and his village. Oh, oh. Bogodwin. Yes, sir. Oh, Hope it's not too heavy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very heavy in the morning. No, no. Um, Uncle Williams, we have a deal, you know. And as for me, I cannot miss your teaching. So, the last ministry, sir. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. You like mysteries. Thank you so much, sir. You see, the last mystery is a mystery I'm going to call the mystery of the prayer of Jabez. Mm. You see, Jabez is not just a name, mm. but a system. Hmm? A system that is connected to pain, sorrow. So in other words, it means that in the life of some people, what they are experiencing is a mystery called Jabez. Hmm. So beyond naming that guy Jabez, it's also a system that is a mystery behind that name Jabez. And so it is connected to pain, to sorrow. And the Bible said he's the most honorable man. Hmm. It means that Jabez was a righteous man, but then he still suffered pain. Yes, I, I know the story so well. It's a common story being preached in our own church. It is not enough to know the stories. Mm. There are many stories in the Bible. The question is, do you know the mystery embedded, the spiritual mystery embedded in those stories, in those accounts? The Bible is not a book of stories, mm. but of mysteries. So if you see anybody who says, I read the Bible, I like reading the Bible because there are many stories, the other person has not gone deep. Mm. The Bible is not a book of stories, but a book of mysteries. Exactly, Uncle Williams. I don't want to boast that I know the Bible anymore. Mm. Because since I've been listening to your teachings, huh, I've been crying for the spirit of revelation. And God will give to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are four different prayer points I'm going to be bringing out again in this ministry. Mm. 
So we were engaging that of the stormy seas yesterday, we brought four. Now today or so, it's another four. Mm. There are four different pair points embedded in this mystery called Jabez. And the first one is that, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. So if you see yourself recycling pain, if by chance you feel that there is a Jabez in your life, that the mystery of Jabez, the name of Jabez associated with pain is in your life or your ministry or your family. When you find yourself amidst that mystery called Jabez, the mystery of pain and sorrow, the first thing to ask is not deliverance, it's to ask for blessing. Jabez is connected to more of blessing than deliverance. In that order, just like Jabez did. Because the blessings of God does not favor Satan. It acts as if Satan is not even there. And the second prayer point was enlarge my coasts, enlarge my thank you, enlarge my space, you know, enlarge my understanding. Let me grow, let me expand. Because if you ask for the blessing, the blessings of God is not a small thing. The blessings of God comes in a big shape. And so if your territory is not enlarged, your tendency will not be able to take the blessing. In fact, a lot of blessings will waste if you are not enlarged. And so the second prayer point is enlarge my territory. Enlarge my space. Let me let, because I feel boxed up. I feel tight. I feel I feel small. Enlarge me. Bring a space in my life that your blessings can occupy. And I feel if the coast is not enlarged. If the capacity is not built, then it is impossible for the blessing to stay. Exactly. Mm. And the third prayer point says that your hand be upon my life. There is a mystery called the hand of God. We will not be able to deceive that in this meeting. Mm. When the hand of God is upon your life, that hands lift men. When you see men rising, when you see a ministry rising, when you see any particular life and destiny rising, it is the hand of God upon that life. So when anybody finds themselves in a Jabez situation, what you also need is that the hand of God will be upon your life. That hand that can lift you. That hand that can promote you. That hand that can bring you from the valley to the mountain is the lifting hands of God. And this final prayer point, that's what got me most, is the most Almost the most important part of the prayers. Jabez understood that if he has prayed, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, if that one is answered, and enlarge my territory, and that one is answered, and your arm be upon my life, and that one is answered. Once those three things happen in the life of a man, the next attack is from the enemies. They won't let that kind of man rest. In other words, when they see any man walking in speed, the enemies run after the man. In other words, when they see any man blessed, blessed with ideas, blessed with creativity, blessed with skill, enemies run after them. When they see a man coast enlarged and they see God expanding a man, expanding a ministry, enemies begin to run. And because Jabez was very wise, he pulled that fall like the knot to cover the old prayers. He said that you deliver me from evil. Uncle Williams, what are the wisdom embedded in these four prayers? Because for every new level, there's a new devil. For every new face, there's a new fight. So, the best man ask for protection. He knows that if you give me all these three and I'm not protected by you, the hmm. enemies will slay my life. So he said, God, protect me from evil. So that his blessings will be kept. His territory will not be invaded. And that the hand of God will continually rest upon his life to give him speed. Because once the hand of God is upon the life of a man, one of the results you see is speed. So when somebody is asking God, give me the grace of speed, when you see that person running with speed, it's not that the person has legs, legs to run. The Bible says the race is not to the sweet, not to the strong. It is the hand of God upon that life of the man. Just like in the hand of, the hand of God was in the life of Elijah. The Bible says, and the hand of God was on the head of Elijah, and he overtook the chariot of Ahab. So, Jabez is a system in the University of Tears. When anyone sees the semblance of Jabez in his or her life, this is one of the prophetic protocol prayers to engage. End of class for the mystery of Jabez. So, when you find sorrow, pain, perpetually in your life, 
that is the system of Jabez. Mm. And when you find a system of Jabez in your life, rush to the books, the volume of the books, find out what did Jabez do, engage that same thing, and carry the result that happens after Jabez. So there are times that your testimony can be like this song. For me to see all the thoughts and plans you have for me. For I will put my trust in you, knowing that you died to set me free. I don't know what to say, and I don't know where to start. But as you gave the grace, with all that's in my heart, I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest night, through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing. Your word is true, I will see, I will praise you in my darkest nights through the sorrow and the pain. I will see, I will praise I lift my hands to honor you because your word is. subscribe now we have come to the end of this prophetic movie I know you have been blessed in these past few weeks you command the wind the storm will cease you invoke the mystery of remembrance by having good track records when you find out that there is a system of jibes around your life you engage the prayer of Jabez in that order. Now I want to bring the prophetic again. The power that compels the things that be not as though they were. And so I decree and I declare that every areas of your life where you need the prophetic to rescue you, let that grace speak for you now. You have tried fasting, you have tried prayers, you have tried everything. There is something the prophetic does. The prophetic pretends as if Satan is not there. It will come into that case and veto whatever it is and make sure that that thing that be not is. And so, 
all those things that you want to be, that you expect in your life, the prophetic draws it to your life. The ones you do not want, the prophetic moves them out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Enjoy your miracle in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you, if you are led to sow a seed of faith to all these prayers, you can use our candidates on the screen. At the same time, from next Sunday, we will begin to show our next new movie, Bukpe Boya Season 2. After which, Ken Besono follows, and on and on like that. Let's meet at Faith Jews Baba TV Yoruba next Sunday for another new series. God bless you. When all your hope is gone and there's nowhere to turn, you're gonna be alright. Darkness all runs your way every day. You're gonna be alright, right, right. When all your friends are gone and there's nowhere to turn, it's never too late for Jesus. Though darkness all runs your way every day, it's never too late. For Jesus, come on, never too late. He is there when you call, never too late. He will break every wall, never too late. When you call on Jesus, never too late for Him. He will be your light in your darkest night. It's never too late, oh, never too late for Jesus.